السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أي على الصلاة أي على الصلاة الحمد لله يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويغيث الملهوف إذا ندا ويكشف السوء ويفرج الكربات لا تحيا القلوب إلا بذكري ولا يقع أمر إلا بإذني ولا يتخلص من مكروه إلا برحمتي ولا يحفظ شيء إلا بكلاءتي ولا يدرك مأمول إلا بتيسيره ولا تنال سعادة إلا بطاعته وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له رب العالمين وإله الأولين والآخرين وقيم السماوات والأرضين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث بالكتاب المبين والسرات القويم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The creator of the heavens and the earth The only one who answers the supplications and prayers of those who call upon him The only one who relieves the distressed from their hardships And the only one who removes difficulties trials, tribulations, and adversities. The only one who can revive the dead hearts from their heedlessness, and the only one who has complete control over everything that happens in the universe. Nothing happens or occurs except by His will, subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge, His wisdom, and His might and power. No human being is able to be relieved from any hardship that they are experiencing except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and grace. And no true happiness in this world and the next can be attained except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. And I bear witness, there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. 
who has no partners, the Lord of the creation, the Lord of Adam and Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad and all of the creation. And I also bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and final messenger sent to all of mankind. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, over the past couple of weeks, we've been seeing and hearing about a sickness or virus called coronavirus. Everywhere you look, everything that you hear, every email that you get, every text message, all messages on your social media account, we are being constantly bombarded by videos, audios, news flashes about this so-called global pandemic or epidemic. Indeed, these are very stressful and anxious times. What are we advised to do as Muslims? What does the Quran tell us to do? What does the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advise us with? What do we find within our beautiful religion of Islam to deal with these types of situations, these trials, these tribulations? We know as Muslims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has clarified everything beneficial for us. And they have warned us from everything which may bring about us harm. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, sickness, and more specifically, pandemics or epidemics bring about a sense of anxiety and nervousness amongst all. The sense of the unknown, something that we don't know or don't know enough about, afflicting sickness on us, causes feelings of uncertainty and anxiety, stress, and sometimes helplessness. So where do we as Muslims find our refuge? Where and what do we find our inner peace? Brothers and sisters, it is in these times that we build spiritual, emotional, and physical resilience. And from amongst the core beliefs, core to our faith as Muslims, that our faith is founded upon, is believing that nothing befalls a person, except that it is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that whatever occurs has a divine purpose, even if we may not understand it or perceive it. Some of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions within the creation, we may perceive them, and see the signs that Allah is showing us, but there may be other actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation that we don't understand and that we may not see or realize. So from the important fundamentals of faith is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree, accepting Allah's decree, loving Allah's decree, being content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree, and knowing that there is wisdom and knowledge behind everything that happens in the creation, even if we do not come to understand it at this day and this time. When we look into the past, into history, we find that plagues have affected many of our pious predecessors in the past. And when we ponder and reflect, we find that the decisions and the guidelines that they set were followed by many of the civilizations the so-called Western or civilized civilizations throughout the world followed in our righteous, pious predecessors' footsteps. A plague in the city of Amwas, close to Palestine in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, there was a plague that broke out. And Umar ibn al-Khattab and many of the other companions and some of the tabi'een, they were actually traveling towards that city during a military campaign. And once Umar ibn al-Khattab, he heard that there was a plague in the city of Amwas, he decided to turn back and not enter into that city. And upon that, one of the companions, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, he said to Umar, he said, O oh Umar, are you fleeing from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Umar replied, he says, yes, we are fleeing 
from the decree of Allah to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Omar, he replied to him and he said, Do you think that if you had camels and they went down into a valley which had two sides, one which was fertile and one which was barren, is it not that if you grazed them on the fertile side, then the grazing would be by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if you grazed them in the barren side, then that also would be by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the decision of Umar ibn al-Khattab, this was in direct alignment with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said that if there is a plague in a land, then you should not enter into it. And if you are in a land in which there is a plague, then you should not come out of it. So we understand from this wise decision and statement of our second Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu that we have to have firm faith that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but at the same time take the proper measures and abstain from things that may lead to our destruction and know that no, no matter how much we wash our hands how much we wash our faces how many gallons of hand sanitizer we use that it cannot protect you from the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it was written that you will get sick, no matter how many vaccines that you take, you're still going to get sick. And if there are thousands of people sick with coronavirus, and you walk amongst them, and shake their hands and talk to them, if it was not written for you to get sick, then you will not contract the virus. And this is the fundamental belief of the Muslim. And the Muslim must never forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of all of our affairs as Allah he tells us in the Quran وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ That Allah, He is the supreme master. He is the supreme master over all His creatures and the all-wise, the all-aware of everything that is happening in the creation. And Allah also reminds us in many verses in the Quran that there will be no calamity that befalls a person except that it is the will and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, even though we may not understand all the wisdoms behind adversity, behind hardships, behind universal change and moments of struggle, in their passing, we witness our need to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we witness and observe the reality of our neglect and our shortcomings. The neglect of our souls. The neglect of our hearts. The neglect of our devotion to our Lord and His commandments. Moments of difficulty on many occasions teach us empathy. A person who has gone through strife can emphasize even more personally with someone in a worse situation than them. In these type of situations, the selfishness and ego of humanity dwindles when all of humanity are collectively weak and they learn that their only solution is turning to their Lord and Creator first and foremost, then turning to each other and inviting others to the Lord who created them and the one who binds them with other people. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, many countries throughout the world are taking measures to do quarantines. Schools in many states have been shut down here in Maryland. Some neighborhoods have even been quarantined here in the USA. So how should we react or understand all of these sudden changes which took place in only one week that are taking place right in front of our eyes. We need to prepare ourselves. And the most important preparations we need to have, brothers and sisters, before we take up physical preparations, before we take up mental preparations, before we take up financial preparations, we need to have spiritual preparations. The quarantine that we need as Muslims is the quarantining of our souls from sins and disobedience. 
the quarantining of our souls from loving our egos and following our desires and our addictions to sins. The washing and purification that we need to be doing is the purification of our hearts and the purification of our souls. So what are some of the recommendations and advices that we find in the religion of Islam and how to deal with situations such as the coronavirus which we are bombarded with and surrounded with today. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us first and foremost with Islam. But also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and blessed us with the most powerful cure for any illness, any sickness, and all difficulties and afflictions. We don't have to pay monthly fees or have money deducted from our paychecks to receive these benefits. Rather, every Muslim can access these benefits at any time and any place. It is dua. It is supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua silah al-mukmin. That the, the supplication is the real weapon of the believer. So what should we say? What should we do to protect ourselves and our families from this virus and other types of sicknesses, other types of ailments and afflictions? The first advice, my brothers and sisters, is to make constant supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the supplications that we can say which will protect us from all types of sicknesses and afflictions. If we say this supplication three times in the morning and three times in the evening, then nothing in the heavens or nothing in the earth can cause us harm. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Bismillah, alladhi la yadurru ma'a ismihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fi sama wa huwa sami'u al-alim. بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, whoever says this supplication three times in the morning will not be afflicted with anything until the evening, and whoever says it three times in the evening will never be afflicted with anything until the morning. And the meaning of it is in the name of Allah. When whose name is mentioned, that nothing in the earth or nothing in the heavens can cause him harm. And Allah is the all-hearing, the all-knowing. So by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we repeat this supplication in the morning three times, and in the evening three times, then nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm your children. Nothing will harm your wife. Nothing will harm your husband. Nothing will harm you. No virus, no disease, no human being, or no shaitan, or jinn as well. So the believer must constantly use the weapons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with in the Quran and Sunnah. They are the nourishment for our soul. The nourishment for our minds. The nourishment for our hearts. Their power may be stronger than the most expensive vaccine in the world. Sometimes, the sickness of our flesh is a reflection and manifestation of the sickness of our hearts and souls. So when the heart is healthy, when the heart is constantly calling upon Allah, when the heart is constantly in communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will find that the body will naturally build up its immunity, will naturally build up its strength, to stay away and keep all of these evil things which may come to it and may harm it. However, when the heart is filled with something other than the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than the oneness of Allah, when your heart is filled up with love of desires and love of the praise of the people and love of showing off and fearing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is the gateway for the shaitan to enter in and to make you weak not only in your heart, but also in your body and mind. Another supplication that the Prophet Muhammad taught us during these times, during times of sickness and affliction, is Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-baras wal-junoon 
والجثام ومن سيء الأسقام. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from leprosy. I seek refuge in you from insanity. I seek refuge in you from elephantiasis and all evil diseases. So these are just some of the advices and recommendations that we find from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And there are many others. When we ponder and reflect and remind ourselves about many of the great prophets and messengers who came before us, many of them experienced hardships and difficulties and afflictions. Ayyub, who was very sick and called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save him. But just imagine... One of our great prophets, Yunus alayhi salam, he was swallowed by a whale. He was in the belly of a whale. Darkness upon darkness upon darkness. Mixed with different kind of stomach acids from the whale and things like this. Imagine what me or you would do if we were inside the belly of a whale. Imagine if we were prohibited from coming out of our homes or imprisoned or stuck in our bedrooms, or under a curfew and cannot leave our neighborhoods, what is the remedy that can relieve us? What is the remedy that can bring us about peace and tranquility and contentment? It is dua, brothers and sisters. It is dua. It is supplication. It is patience and perseverance. What did Yunus do alayhi salam, when he was stuck in the belly of the whale? Did he fight to try to get out? Did he protest to get out? Did he lose hope? Did he give up? No. He sought the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and used his most strongest weapon, dua, that contains the most beautiful form of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the Yunus? What was the dua of Yunus alayhi salam? لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين that there is no other deity than you exalted are you O Allah and indeed I have been from amongst the wrongdoers what did the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم tell us about this supplication not only did our Prophet Yunus call upon Allah in the belly of the whale with this supplication but the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم even knew the strength of this dua. He knew the power of this dua. So he told us and he encouraged us. He said that, دَعْوَةُ الذِّينُونَ إِذَا دَعَى بِهَا وَهُوَ فِي بَطَنَ الْحُوتِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَا أَنْ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ لَمْ يَدْعُ بِهَا رَجُلٌ فِي شَيْءٍ قَطْ إِلَّا اسْتَجَابَ اللَّهُ لَهُ The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the supplication of Yunus, when he was in the belly of the whale, that if any Muslim supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this dua and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything in this world or anything in the hereafter, accept that it will be granted and given to him. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect yourselves, brothers and sisters. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect your families. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect your loved ones. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect your community. So observe, brothers and sisters, how the master key to unlock all difficulties in any situation is the first thing that we say when we enter into Islam, is the statement, La ilaha illallah. Believing in and manifesting the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our beliefs, all of our actions, all of our supplications, it is the key which removes all types of hardships. It is the key which takes away all afflictions. The belief and the practice of Tawheed in every aspect of our lives, when we supplicate only to Allah, when we fear, we only fear Allah. When we ask, we only ask Allah. When we seek assistance, we only seek assistance of Allah. And this is how exactly the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach his young companions. We're talking about the youth. We're worried about the youth, the Muslim identity. We need to teach our youth about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to constantly communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have their hearts attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
as the Prophet, he taught Abdullah ibn Abbas when he was a young child, a young boy. He says, Ya Ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimatin, ihfadillah ihfadik. He says, O oh, young boy, I will teach you some words. Preserve and take care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take care of your prayers. Pray them on time. Make the proper wudu. Press fast your Ramadan. Be obedient to your parents. Be honorable and respectful to your parents. If you take care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything He wants you to do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep all harm away from you. If you preserve Allah and His commandments and Allah is constantly in your mind and in your heart with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon your tongue, Allah will always be there protecting you and preserving you and taking care of you. And then he went on to say, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ If you ask, don't ask the people. Because the people are busy. The people don't want to answer your calls. The people don't want to open their doors. But Allah's doors are always open. You can always call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never deny you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never hang up the phone on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never close the door in your face. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And first and foremost, if you seek assistance, don't seek the assistance of the creation, they're weak. Seek the assistance of the one who is all-powerful, almighty, the one who is perfect in the heavens. وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتَ لَأَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكْ If the whole world gathers up together to harm you with something, or to benefit you with something, they cannot harm you with anything, nor can they benefit you with anything, except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees. One of the great scholars in Islam, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyya rahimahullah, he mentioned in his book Al-Fawa'id, he said, there are no calamities, no types of trials or tribulations in this world, which were ever rectified or removed with anything greater than the tawheed and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the supplications that we find in the Qur'an and the supplications we find in the sunnah to remove any types of hardships contain the fundamentals of tawheed. La ilaha illallah. And the main reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to Yunus was because he called upon Allah starting off with what? La ilaha illallah. And similarly brothers and sisters, hardships, calamities, trials and tribulations are brought about and facilitated through the opposite of tawheed, which is shirk and the worshipping of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So based on this statement of Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyya rahimahullah, let's reflect. Let's ponder a little bit. Could this coronavirus be a punishment for some people? Could this coronavirus be a punishment for some nations engaging in shirk? Engaging in the worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and oppressing other people, whether they be Muslims or non-Muslims? No doubt. Many of the nations that have been affected the most by coronavirus are known to engage in shirk and worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it has also affected non-Muslim countries, uh, it has also affected non-Muslim countries as well. Whatever the case may be, we should all know by now that it is a time to reflect, brothers and sisters. Because reflection brings about awareness. And reflection brings about change. Have any of us ever thought that this plague and epidemic could be a punishment for us as Muslims because of our lack of concern or lack of speech or lack of action? Being, be, a lack of action for thousands of Muslims in China being placed in concentration camps, being forced to abandon Islam, being raped, tortured and their families being torn apart. While the rest of the world, Muslim and non-Muslim, sit back and turn their heads away and don't pay any attention to it. Or the Muslims in India, 
being slaughtered on a daily basis by those worshipping cows and cockroaches and everything else that you can think of in this world, while the rest of the Muslims are just sitting back, watching, not doing anything. Have any of us ever thought that this could be a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah wants to bring people who really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants to bring people who really are committed to this deen and not committed to this dunya only. Isn't it possible that this virus may be a way of Allah either to send us a sign to wake up or it could be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishing us for watching His enemies destroy and colonize the Muslim lands and colonize the Muslim minds where many of us have become so weak in our faith and so complacent that we've come to love and adore the ways of the kuffar and kufr and shirk more than we love Islam, more than we love Quran, more than we love Tawheed, more than we love the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Have any of us ever thought down and reflected that this coronavirus could possibly be a punishment for those countries that are refusing people fleeing from oppression? Italy has been refusing people migrating from North Africa. Now the whole country is on lockdown. Here in the USA, they banned a long list of Muslims from entering the USA unjustly. Now many states are on lockdown. Many of us Muslims in America are negligent in coming to the masjid five times a day. So as a result, Allah may have decreed that many states cannot gather in their masajid and even including in Maryland. And many masajid as we know have closed today for Juma. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed wise in the way He shows us His signs. And al-jaza'u min jins al -hamad. Many things to think about and reflect these days and times, my brothers and sisters. What if we treated our sins like we are treating this coronavirus? What if we paid attention to our deen and read our Qur'ans like we are paying attention to and reading the constant posts and news feeds and things on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and what's up about the coronavirus? What if we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as we are calling upon our doctors and physicians and families and friends? It'd be a totally different situation, brothers and sisters. One thing that we need to remind ourselves, brothers and sisters, is that first and foremost, no person can define or determine why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a certain affliction upon humanity. And why He may have chosen a group and left another group. These are left to Allah and this is the knowledge of the unseen that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of. But as for an epidemic or pandemic, ta'un or waba, then the scholars of Islam mention that it is a form of divine punishment for those who disobey Allah and a test for those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Muslims, how should we understand this pandemic of coronavirus? Number one, if any of us, may Allah protect us all, get this coronavirus, then we need to understand that it happened by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accept it. And take the proper means to try to get a cure. First and foremost is dua. Secondly, going to the doctor, getting vaccines and things like this. But if you are an obedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are affected by any sickness or illness, then know that this could be an elevation of your status. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test you. Don't think that just because you are sick, Allah doesn't love you. 
Allah doesn't want goodness for you. Don't think that just because you have money that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Allah gives money to the Muslim and to the non-Muslim. He gives money to the criminal and He gives money to the most righteous. These are not criteria to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. But if you are righteous, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst the righteous, Amen. then it is an elevation for the status of the Muslim. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, a man came to the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyu nas ashiddu bala'an? He says, which of the people are tried most severely? Which of the people will suffer the most afflictions? He said, Al-Anbiya, Thumma al-Amthal fal-Amthal. He said, the prophets will be affected the most with the most severest of trials. Then those nearest to them. Then those nearest to them. And a man is tried according to his religion. If he is firm in his religion, then his trials are more severe. His trials are more difficult. But if he is frail in his religion and weak in his religion, then he is tried according to his strength of his religion. And the servant shall continue to be tried. The servant shall be continued to find afflictions and calamities throughout his life until he is left walking upon the earth with no sins. So this is a means of purification. A purification for the believers. Not only is it an elevation in status, but also a purification of the sins that we may have committed. And all of us commit sins on a daily basis. But the best of us are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is better for us as believers in this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes us in this world and purifies us from the sins than to be punished in the hereafter. Number three, we should also understand this pandemic of coronavirus that it could be an affliction as well, as a punishment, as I said, a punishment for our sins and a punishment for rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His commandments. As Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu narrated from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ عَجَّلَ لَهُ الْأَقُوبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الشَّرْ أَمْسَكَ عَنْهُ بِذَنْبِهِ هَتَّى يُوَفَّى بِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, When Allah wants good for his servant, then he hastens his punishment in this world. He gives him a punishment for that sin in this world to purify him from those sins that he committed. But if Allah wants bad for his servant, then he withholds his sins for him until he appears before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection. And another way we can interpret this coronavirus and this pandemic is reflection, pondering, contemplating, thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to come back to Him. Allah wants the non Muslims to know and realize that they are weak in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they need to think and ponder over who created them and who created this virus so it can bring them to see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many people now have realized how insignificant they are? How many millionaires are trying to buy a vaccine but they can't find it? How many nations who thought they were so powerful and mighty and they could confront any problem that comes their way, are now crippled and scrambling, confused about what to do. How many people have realized that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, He can take our lives with an unseen virus that we don't even understand, that we cannot cure or we know little or nothing about any time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. How many non-Muslims now have realized the importance of personal hygiene. How much air pollution has been decreased in China since the outbreak of Corona. How many Chinese people have come to realize that eating bats and rats and fried cats and dogs and monkeys are not wholesome types of food and may be the cause of the spread of this virus. How many of us as Muslims are scared? and afraid for ourselves, our families, our children, that this fear has led us to come to the masjid, 
This fear has led us to open the Quran. This fear has led us to make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fear has gotten us back to praying the night prayer, to praying Fajr on time. So the believer brothers and sisters, we live constantly between hope and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear of Allah's punishment, but hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bountiful reward. However, brothers and sisters, do not let the fear of becoming sick overwhelm you or your family to the point that you're consumed with it 24 hours a day. Always remember that it is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His will and the will of our magnificent Creator. So let us repent now, brothers and sisters, before it may be too late. Turn to Him, get back to your deen and pray your five prayers, and give your zakat, and fast your Ramadan, and do the things that we're supposed to do here as Muslims. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Shower us and our families with His mercy, protection, and blessing. Amen. Calamities, illnesses, plagues, pandemics, and epidemics are realities that have occurred in the world since the beginning of time. The righteous people of the past dealt with the reality of affliction with certainty of trusting in Allah and firm conviction that anything given to the believer is only from Allah. And anything taken from the believer is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And one of the last recommendations that we're going to talk about today from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a supplication that can protect us whenever we leave our homes, whenever we leave our residences. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whenever someone goes out of his house, and says this supplication, the following will be said to this man, whether it's an angel or whether it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will say to the man or woman who says this supplication, you are now guided, you are defended, and you are protected. And the devils will go far away from him, and the devil will see another devil and say, how can you deal with a man who has been guided, defeated, uh, defended, and protected? What is this dua? It's very simple. We need to memorize it and we need to teach our children. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla, wa la quwwata illa billah. Whenever you leave your house, make sure you say this dua. In the name of Allah. I put my trust in Allah and there is no might and power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector, if the angels are our protectors and guiding us upon the path, who is better than them to protect us? And who can misguide us or harm us when Allah and His angels are our protectors? So we constantly need to be reminded, brothers and sisters, and constantly keep the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon our tongues and always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement in the Qur'an. قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Say, O believers, that nothing will befall us except that which was written and decreed. And Allah is our guardian and master, and upon Him to the believers place their trusts. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم إنه هو غفور رحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
Stone. Allah, like Allah, Allah, Alhamdulillah, you are Bill Rahman, a Rahim, Maliki, Can I put away? Can I stay? سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله 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 الله
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله الله أكبر الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah bless all of you, protect all of you, protect all of your families. Um, alhamdulillah. Um, as probably all of you know, the schools in Maryland have been closed. Um, also, the governor has sent out, I believe, a message saying that all types of congregations, over 250 people, um, should be canceled and things like that. So we decided to have Juma because you know we don't have a big congregation. Uh, but we advise all of our congregants to constantly take the proper means to protect yourself, protect your families. If there is a vaccine that's going to come out, take the vaccine, wash your hands, do all of the things that the doctors and physicians and professionals and those who are specialized in infectious diseases are telling us to do. Don't get panicked. Don't, do, don't be you know, scared. Don't do something irrational. Right? Uh, alhamdulillah. Also, um, alhamdulillah, we had a conference planned here for next month, uh, April 8th to the April 12th, but we don't know how things are going to okay. be now. Uh, we might have to cancel it and reschedule it. So we're following, you know, day to day, inshallah, what is the, the proper procedure with that. Uh, normally we have a Saturday night dinner in Halaqa. We, is that still on for tomorrow? Or? No, okay, that's going to be canceled this week. Inshallah. So if you're not part of the ICH group, uh, please let one of the brothers, either me or Imam Ismail or Brother Sayyid or Brother Bashir, give us your number so we can send you out messages if you guys are interested in coming for Juma or events and things like that. But I think the message will be open for the five daily prayers. And the prayer schedule is also shared in the, the group that we have, the ICH communications group. Um, we also have the food pantry here. Um, please donate, be generous. Alhamdulillah, yesterday we received a very, very big donation from one of our sisters, mashallah, um, from out of, uh, out of, uh, down in, uh, where is she from? Bethesda. In Bethesda, mashallah. May Allah bless her and reward her family. So, uh, any other announcements, Sheikh? Okay. Yes. Inshallah, uh, we have some uh, groceries here, non perishable, but. We don't know what's going to happen. We want to limit per individual five items. Five items per individual or family. Because we don't want you to haul everything and while other people need. Because they started calling me since yesterday. When is the day? When is that? So we want to share. And the most who are in need. This is Sadara. So the most who are in need are allowed to get some food here, inshallah. And the school continues on weekdays for kids. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, because we don't have a big number. We are not just allowed to come together more than 200. So we have few kids learning the Quran from 5 to 6.30. From 5 to 6.30, if you bring your kids, inshallah, we teach them Quran and uh, other subjects related to Islam. Inshallah, may Allah bless all of us for coming. And tell other brothers, if they want to come for Salah, inshallah, let them free. Allah says, <laughs> You know, the death that you are fearing running away is going to meet you on the way. Where are you going? Huh? Where are you going? Allah is ahead of you. So don't be afraid of this. Allah is testing us, inshallah. We will pass with flying colors, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. The food, we have lunch, inshallah. Help yourself after the sunnah.